Hello guys, welcome back to another video, very special video today and I cannot wait to get started. So a company called Bimatech, they are based in the US of A, they have kindly supplied me with a full sound system for the BMW 130i. Now to be honest, I haven't really noticed the sound system in the BMW 130i to be you know, too bad. I believe it's like the mid-range hi-fi system. Um, but the new kit that we're going to be installing today should be a decent improvement. So I'll, so I'll show you what they have sent me out. So they have sent me out the Alpha One complete system. So of course it comes with the subwoofers which go underneath the seat and they look gorgeous. And then it comes with all of the speakers and the tweeters for the car as well and the associated wiring now the good thing about this kit is it's completely plug and play so it's designed to work with all of the factory wiring there's no modifications to any of the door cards you know to the floor and anything like that it all literally plugs and plays and uh yeah so it should you know make for an easy install to be honest but yeah guys if you do want to check out bimatech there will be some links down in the description box below but without further ado let's get outside and let's get cracking okay guys so before we get started i'm going to show you exactly where all of the speakers are located on this car but before we do that let me just show you again what the new speaker system looks like i mean how good do these look it's like aluminium like this the finish on these is so so good You can tell these are going to be of the highest quality. But yeah, let me show you where all of the speakers are located in this car. So, we have one speaker in each of the front door cards. We don't have any in the dash. Oh, and how could I forget? Of course, we have two subwoofers in the front. We have one underneath the driver's seat and one underneath the passenger seat. So, these seats are going to have to come out. In the rear, we don't have too many. Of course, this is only BMW 1 Series, so no speakers in the rear door cards. But there is a few in the boot or the trunk, whatever you want to call it. As you can see at the side of the parcel shelf here, we have this mesh. And I'm guessing this holds a speaker and a tweeter because, of course, we have four tweeters with our kit. So, yeah, there's that on both sides now I'm not entirely sure how to access them that they've ever re removed that panel before so that's going to be something new but I'm sure it's not going to be too difficult okay so before we do get started I thought it would be a good idea to do some kind of before and after now I appreciate it's not going to be the best you know it you're not really going to be able to gauge how good these uh, speakers are because you know, not only are you limited by the aux cable for what my phone is plugged into, but you're also limited by this microphone that I'm recording on. And then you're also going to be limited, you know, by what the camera can process. And you're also going to be limited to what YouTube can process. And you're also going to be limited to the speakers or the headphones that you're listening to the video on. So, yeah, it's not really going to be the best um, gauger of, you know, really how good these speakers are, but hopefully it's going to give somewhat um, of a difference. So, yeah, I've just found some copyright-free uh, high bass, apparently, uh, music. And so, yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and play this. I'll put the speaker in different parts of the car and hopefully you'll be able to kind of gauge, um, you know, what it's like. Put it down by the subwoofers.
that's enough. Yeah, to be honest, like I said, I don't really think it's terrible, the stock speaker system. Um, I know, I, you know, there has been quite a few complaints with the stock BMW system, but I, you know, it does the job for me, but um, I, I really do think these new uh, speakers and subwoofers are going to take things to the next level. So it'd be interesting to see uh, how much of an improvement we, uh, you know, we notice. So yeah, let's just get cracking now. So I think I'm going to start with the speakers in the rear, mainly due to the fact that I have no idea how you access them. So I'm going to start with removing the parcel shelf. I'm guessing we either need to remove the trim panel at the top, which I'm guessing is going to be quite a bit of work because this seal will have to come out. We'll then have to remove the um, the carpets entirely and yeah I think that's just going to make things more difficult so I think what I'll do is I'll fold the seats forward and see if we can maybe fold this carpet back to access the speakers from below that's probably going to be the best uh, course of action I think okay then so what I've done is popped off this trim panel which don't know what you'd call it an armrest a shoulder rest basically the side of the seat is just held in by a couple of clips so it does just pull off i think you have to sort of pull it away and then pull it up and it comes out and if we fold the seat forward you can see the boot carpet is not held in by much it looks like this trim panel here and then this trim panel here where this hook is attached to so we have a torx bolt and I'm guessing if I pop this off we're going to have a couple more is that off and I don't even think we're going to have to remove those because it's not holding the carpet in place we should be able to just pull this carpet from behind this trim panel because I don't think there is anything else holding it in place let's also get the boot floor lifted out and this one Torx 40 bolt This should lift off, which is actually broken, which is always good. And now this carpet should lift out. Okay, so I managed to get the boot carpet free to a degree. Just got to disconnect the uh, 12 volt socket, which I've already done. Just got to disconnect the uh, light as well. It should pull out. So yeah, we can now see the speaker itself. And we do have a tweeter, it's just there as well. So I'm just gonna disconnect the speaker and the tweeter. And it's just held in by a few Torx screws, which will get removed. Okay, so just found it easier to remove the entire trim piece. That means I have almost perfect access to the speaker and the tweeter. I'm just going to disconnect them and get them unscrewed from this trim piece. So, so speaker disconnected, tweeter disconnected and removed. And then the speaker itself is held in by three Torx 20 screws. And with all three screws removed, it should drop out. There we go. So we have our new speaker and tweeter all connected up. Just need to plug that into the existing wiring and then I can screw this back into place. Okay, so pretty sure we have finished this side now. As you can see, new speaker is in place, new tweeter is in place. I've just cable tied the wiring to the existing wiring loom. So that is all neatly tucked out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is reinstall this trim piece and then do the exact same on the other side. So with all this side now put back I've also went ahead and done this side as well as you can see new speaker in place, new tweeter in place, the wiring has been cable tied to an existing loom. The only difference with this side is there was this bracket here which I guess holds a CD changer I don't have a CD changer in this car, so I have no idea why this bracket was even here. But I have removed it and the bolts, of course. So, yeah, I will have saved a good few grams off the, uh, off the total car's weight. So, basically gaining free horsepower. 
But yeah, with the new speaker and tweeter in place, let's go ahead, reinstall the trim piece, and then we can move on to the front of the car. Okay then, so moving on to the front. As we can see, the passenger side, I've already completed. I've already removed the seat, replaced the subwoofer in the floor there, and as you can see, also replace the door speaker and tweeter as well. Now, let me guide you through the process. So, essentially, what you need to do is remove the seat. Now, the seat itself is only held in by four Torx 50 bolts, but we also need to remove the seat belt as well. It's just held in place behind this trim piece here. You just need to pop that off, and then there is just one T50 bolt. So let's remove that first. Okay, so like I said, that trim piece just pops off. That's that removed. Let's get this T50 bolt for the seat belt removed. Seat belt can then come out of the way. Now there is just four T50 bolts holding the seat in place. There's the front two removed, and there is the rear two removed. Now just lower the seat down, and then rock it back, because there is the electrical connector that we need to disconnect. Slide it across, and that pulls out. Now we can maneuver the seat out. There we are. I'm just going to pull the mats out because I will be giving the carpets a bit of a clean. It'd be a shame not to while the seats are out. Next thing then is these Phillips screws. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six. Holding this cover in place. So with those all loose, this cover should lift up. There we are. Don't lose your screws. And with the cover now removed, it has revealed the subwoofer itself, which is held in by four T20 screws. So we'll go ahead and remove those as well. And now we can lift the subwoofer itself out. Just disconnect the electrical connector. And there we go, that's the old subwoofer removed. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna give this area a good clean up, just give it a vacuum and a wipe over. While we have the seats out, it does make sense to do so. Okay, so gave the carpet a good clean. It's now time to install the new subwoofer. So of course, just plug it in. And then we can drop that into position. Okay, now we can reinstall that grill. There we are then, that is that grill reinstalled and that is the subwoofer fully replaced. Okay, so now let's tackle the door speaker and the tweeter. So to access them, obviously we need to remove the door card. So the door card is held in by a bunch of different clips that go the perimeter of the door card and also three screws. So there is one screw around here, one screw around here, and there's also a screw behind this little cap here. So first thing we need to do is remove this trim piece. So it should just pull off. It's just held in by a bunch of clips. Once you pry it away, it should start to come off. And there we go. Is that removed? We now have access to the two Torx 20 screws. We carefully remove this cap in the door handle. There we are. There is a Phillips screw here. Now if we just give the door card a bit of a tug, I like to start at the bottom pry the clips away. There we are. And it's a good idea if you have a stool to rest it on. 
there's a few things we want to disconnect here so I'll just get the door handle release out of the way. I'm going to leave the window switches plugged in, no need to remove that. I'm just going to disconnect the tweeter and the speaker itself. And now the speaker itself is held in by three 8mm nuts, so we'll go ahead and remove those. Three. And there's the main door speaker removed. Now to access the tweeter, very simple, all we need to do is pull this trim piece away, just add in by two clips. There we are. If we turn this over, we should have a foam piece here. Let's pull that out. And then the tweeter itself is revealed. Just give that a twist and it should come out. I'm just gonna go straight ahead and install the new tweeter. There we are, the new tweeter is in place. We can reinstall this foam piece. And we can pop this back in place as well. Okay, so when it comes to the installation of the door speaker, if you just try and drop it into place, you can see that there is not enough thread on the original captive bolts. So what is supplied with the kit is these uh, spacers um, or washers and then these extra threaded parts so make sure that there is a nice tight connection and this speaker is not going to move around anywhere. If you're wondering which ones you need to put on to the threads first it is this one with the you know one end is wider than the other put it on like so that's so that the new threaded part can go inside of it to form a nice tight seal. Now let's position our speaker and we'll get our threaded bolt, I guess you'd call it, like kind of like a female bolt. Put our washer or spacer on it and we'll just go ahead and thread that on. There we go then, that's how we're looking. What we need to do now is just tighten them all down with an Allen key. Don't need to go too crazy when you're tightening these down. But as you can see, it's nice and secure in there now. It's not going anywhere. You're not going to get any rattles or anything from this. But now it's just a case of plugging the tweeter in and the speaker as well. And then we can rehang the door card. Before you put your door card on, just make sure that your door handle latch is lined up and it's working. Now let's get this door card back in place. Go. all clips are in place now we can just reinstall our three screws so as you can see the door card is now complete put back together the grab handle is back in place that just clips in you know pretty much the reverse of removal and then I've reinstalled this small cap piece here in the uh, in the door handle and it now it's just going to be a case of reinstalling the seats so let's get them back in okay then guys so i think we are pretty much there or thereabouts now i went ahead and reinstalled both of the front seats floor mats are also now back in and let's go over what we have replaced today so both of the underfloor subwoofers both of the front door speakers and front tweeters as well and then in the rear of course we have two speakers in the parcel shelf along with the tweeters as well. Now let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so I've just noticed that the audio settings for the bass was already at plus five. So if you thought it sounded pretty bassy on the stock audio system, it's more than likely why. Now I'm gonna leave it on the plus five setting and then obviously play that same song, that same central bass boost, copyright free, whatever it's called. Um, and then hopefully we can gauge a difference. And then I'm gonna knock it back down to the standard bass level. But yeah, without further ado, here goes.
can tell the difference already. <laughs> already I can tell the difference. That is very, very decent. Okay, now I'm just going to change the audio settings. I'll put... Oh, wait! Oh my god. I don't know what I've done, but I already set the bass back to zero. So that wasn't even with the bass turned up. Wow! Get ready for this then. Um, oh, okay. Let's let's start it again then with the bass turned up. That was just stock bass. Okay, get ready for this. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I think we get the point. A massive difference. Wow, I, I honestly didn't expect there to be such a big difference between the stock system and this Alpha 1 system, but, <laughs> well, I guess, uh, I guess I am genuinely surprised. Don't know what else to say. I know it's going to be difficult, you know, for a difference really to be picked up on the microphone, but guys, you're just going to have to take my word for it. A whole lot. Uh, bassier with this new uh, setup and I don't know what it is as well it seems like it's clearer and cleaner as well I did play a, a copyrighted song you know just on the radio and I noticed that it seems a lot cleaner um, there's like l uh, less uh, static noise and whatever else now that may be because the original speakers are like what 15 16 years old now but yeah, a massive, massive difference with this new system, and I'm honestly over the moon now. I'm not a massive music lover. I mean, I, you know, I like my music, um, but I'm not uh, someone that drives around having their, um, you know, uh, radio set mega high. But yeah, I guess that may, that, I guess that may change now. But um, yeah, honestly, sounds so so good for something that is literally just plug and play. So. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna uh, I guess I'm gonna probably wrap this video up now. Okay then guys, so there we go. The Alpha One audio system by Bimatech. What are my final thoughts? Honestly, I'm blown away. I really did not expect such a massive difference from swapping out the stock system to this new system. The fact that you know the speakers, the tweeters and the subwoofers are the same size and actually the new system, the speakers and the subwoofers are a considerable amount lighter. That's one thing that I didn't uh, point out. Yeah, they are a lot lighter and a lot more compact. So the fact that you can get so much more performance out of them, you know, it is, is pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, like I said, I really did not see anything wrong with the standard stock audio system, but I guess I was wrong. You know, the fact that it's now so much uh, more crisp, so much cleaner, and the bass, uh, you know, comes in so much stronger. Um, yeah, this is definitely something that I would recommend if you are in the market for an audio upgrade. The fact that this is plug and play, and Bimatech, I believe they also do sell upgraded amps as well, but, you know, they can still work with your uh, standard factory amp, but if you want to go down the route in upgrading your amp, 
then you can uh, do so at a later date. But um, yeah, I don't really know what there is else to say. Honestly, the audio system in my BMW 130i has truly been transformed. Again, guys, if you do want to check out Bimatech, there will be some links down in the description box below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Please give it a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so. And I will see you all in that next one. Peace.